Welcome to the Accelerate Church TV program. We are so glad that you could tune in with us today. Pastor Jeremy is currently teaching the series, Go. He is breaking down the Great Commission. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. That is for you and me, my friend. And Pastor Jeremy is teaching us how to do that. Let's head into the sanctuary right now. Your decisions have consequences. And a lot of times when you make the wrong decision, it's going to affect you going. In other words, you're not going to go. When you go, you're going with the authority of heaven, the authority of Jesus himself. He delegated it to you. So he's not going to give you that authority and then just ghost you. Are you listening? Somebody said, what's that mean? Like, you know, just all of a sudden you just disappear. Now, pastors, they know what that's like. Uh, you know, I deal with that all the time. People ghost all the time. They just don't show up no more. It happens everywhere. Every church that there's ever been, that happens. People are here, they're excited, and they're gone. Well, I was talking to a preacher friend of mine this week on the phone, and I said, hey, brother so-and-so, I, we had known, we had a little past thing that we had helped this pastor with. I said, is he still talking to you? And he said that term. That's why it's coming back in me. He said, he's ghosting me now. I said, ghosting you? He's like, yeah, I text him three times. He never texts me back. Well, that had me that night going through my text and realized, no, no, I accidentally ghosted a few folks. When you get a lot of texts sometimes and your children still take your phone and play games on it, sometimes you feel like pastor ghosted you. If that happened, I'm sorry. I will get back with you, I promise, all in good time. I don't know what happens sometimes, though. Texting may not be the best way, emailing even, even may not be the best way to communicate if you need to talk about something important. Face-to-face -face is always the best, right? <laughs> But, I mean, thank God we can communicate. It's amazing. You know, I'm old, just old enough to know, because I was raised in a preacher's home, what it's like to pastor without that device. But literally, I have my device, and I've, I show it to other pastors all the time. I'm like, isn't it cool? We can just pretty much operate our whole ministry right here in the palm of our hand. It's pretty cool, because we just communicate. Well, it used to not be that way. Well, it takes courage. Somebody say Courage. So if, you, if you're not clear on hearing from God, then you need to go back to when you were, okay? And you say, well, what happened there? Because if you stay in this land where you don't have clarity, it will affect your courage to continue to go and do what God called you to do, okay? Cowards, they're not making it into heaven. On the who's who's list in hell, in Revelation chapter 21, cowards are on top of the list, Right next to murderers and thieves, on down the line, adulterers, right? Sodomites, all those folks. Hey, they're the who's who in hell. I don't want anyone going to hell. Now, only the devil would take a message of saying, there's hope. You can repent. You can get under the blood of Jesus and be saved and turn that to mean that's hate. <laughs> I'm trying to help you so you don't burn in hell eternally. So you know what? tumultuousness that's going to come in your life, a lot of it's going to have to do with between you and me if you're called here. Why? Because the devil wants you to stop operating in the authority that Jesus bought and purchased for you. He wants you to stop. He wants you to hesitate. Cowards, they always figure out how to hesitate and make it look like it's God. Always. See, it takes courage, and inside every human is the choice to either be courageous or to be a coward. Inside every human being is that choice. And if you're going to go with what God says, go, therefore, and do, you're going to have to keep your courage tank filled up. Cowards, they, they hesitate so much that you would almost think there's a first and second and even third hesitations in the Bible. That's the way a lot of Christians operate. You know, God called me. Listen, if you have trouble being faithful to church, you might as well forget the massive, huge calling you think you have on your life. You've got to be faithful in a local church. I've always known this my whole life. And no, I haven't always been in a position where I knew exactly where I was supposed to be. In 2006, Aaron and I drove 42 weekends out of 52 to help Mark and Deborah with the church that we would, had launched there in Oklahoma City called Waterbrook. And then that season had passed, and I knew we were supposed to be here in Amarillo. 
And so here we are in Amarillo, and I'm looking for a local church because I know I have to be locked in in a local church. God's not going to do anything in my life, though he's called me to preach from three years old, unless I'm in a local church under a pastor. So guess what? We came to town, and we prayed. We said, we got to find a pastor. So we started visiting, and we went to several different churches because I knew I have to find a pastor. This is how God works. All authority has been given to him. He tells me to go and make disciples. What, what is he using to do that? The church. And in each church, if it's set up properly and biblically, it has a set man, the pastor, over that church. Not 40 pastors, a pastor. I'm not dissing anyone. I'm just telling you the biblical setup. You can disagree and hold your opinion. I'm not going to argue with you. But this is the New Testament church setup. God has given a gift, and everyone has to have a pastor, even someone that's in the office of a pastor. So that's why I'm blessed to have a pastor. It gives me freedom, and it actually gives me more boldness to say things to you because I have to deal with some of the same emotions, some of the same feelings you do when it comes to what you deal with around here. Of course, it's a different setup because I'm here, and he lives up in Michigan. I can't do anything about that. But what I can do is when he holds special meetings, go and support my pastor. And then if I get a word from God that I need to go other places, I know this, that I'm going to run that through my pastor first. You see, you maybe didn't get a word last week, but I got a word standing right there that I need to go to different places to get a different touch of the Holy Spirit. So guess who I'm running that through? Well, I took it to the Lord first, Lord, because I have a relationship with the Lord first. But then, pastor, what do you think about that? So see, that's why I can stand boldly and say, if you don't have that kind of relationship and a pastor, then you're going to have trouble going. Now, you may think I'm having trouble getting going in this series, and it feels like it, but I don't go by how I feel. <laughs> the truth of the matter is, it's easier for the devil to stop you before you go than after you get to going. Because see, once you get to going with the authority of Jesus, it's stronger than any freight train you've ever seen. On the second and fourth Sunday nights of every month, we have Life Links. We gather together with like-minded believers and discuss the current series that Pastor Jeremy is preaching. We have food, we laugh together, we pray together, and we build those godly relationships with our brothers and sisters within the church. We would love for you to join us for Life Links. You can find a list of all of our groups along with their locations on our app, our website, or just stop by the desk in the lobby. We have someone there ready to help you find the perfect LifeLink group. Cowards, they always figure out a way to hesitate. See, they're not going to come tell you, I'm not going, Jesus, but they'll hesitate. And you can see this with your children. Go make your bed. But I, I, I'm doing this. See, they figured out a way to hesitate. Now you say, well, you're calling your children cowards? I'm just saying this. It takes courage when God tells you to go, when it looks like all hell's breaking loose. When every feeling you have inside of you screaming, no, don't do that. It's going to cost you to do it. But I just want to tell you, there's some warriors in this room that aren't just young people, but are adults. I've watched. I'm thinking about one woman that she had to come to repentance for something that happened before she came to this church. She came to this church to get everything clean and right. And as she was here, she had come. She'd already experienced God, gotten right with God. But then the Lord started dealing with her. Hey, your repentance wasn't actually proper. You hadn't repented to the person you sinned against, but the one you sinned with. So that's what Judas Iscariot did. He went and repented to the guys he sinned with. They didn't care. He didn't go to Jesus. And sadly, he hung himself. There's that stupid spirit again. Spirit of suicide is always of the devil. Cut himself off from any hope of mercy when he hung himself because he never went and repented to Jesus. Peter, he denied Jesus and cussed somebody out. You say, well, that's not as bad as, as betraying him. Okay, oh, well, okay, I might say that's true, but I will say this. It's not good if you're cussing people out saying you're not a Christian. Pretty bad. 
especially after saying, I'll die with you. Isn't that something? That's what Peter said, I'll die with you. And Jesus told him, well, before the cock crows, you'll deny me three times. And I, isn't it something? Isn't it something that a rooster would obey God and crow right after Peter denied that third time? God's word will come true if you'll just hold on to your courage. Not back away from your courage. Cowards don't like to go and move forward about the Father's business. It hurts. It's painful. People laugh at you. People mock you. Of course, what else do you expect if you're going to be a real Christian? Now, you're really going to find a reason to hesitate when you find out the very first thing he tells you to go and do is make a disciple. Because this is where things get ugly real quick. Now, if I can get you to walk an aisle, bro, glory to God, I praise God for that. That's wonderful. But if I can get you to stick with the word, that's where pastor wants to do like a touchdown dance, baby. I'm like, whoa, you're sticking with the word? Even when your family's giving you a hard time? Even when your friends are mocking you? Even when things aren't going the way you want them to go at the job? You're still are sticking with the word. Even when it's a grind in your marriage, even when your kids are on your nerves, you're sticking with the word. Yeah. Woo! That fires me up. Because that is how you have true success. Why? Disciples follow the word no matter what. They follow the word no matter what. Disciples aren't cowards. Are you kidding me? Disciples have been skinned alive, put in oil, burned as a lamppost beside roads. That's just slightly some of it. If I sit here and named everything, people have come up with all kinds of ways to persecute Christians, cutting their heads off, stabbing them thousands of times till they bleed out. All these things are real. I'm not making these up. If you study history, you'll find it's true. Somewhere in this planet right now, there are Christians being persecuted to that degree. But like I said the other day, I'll never forget the guy that had that underground church in China and said the torture he was under for years, he, he actually longed and would rather face that than when he came to America, the way people talk. It's amazing to me. Now, I just want you to know this. If you're in this room and you're offended, and you struggle to receive from God in this room, it's on you. I take communion before I get up here, and I clear my heart, Lord, if there's anything. If you do that before you come to church, maybe all of a sudden you get some clarity. But do what you want. Of course, that'll get you to hell doing what you want. Now, see, did you catch that? That was a slight rebuke. Why? Disciples will get rebuked. This is what I don't think many people know they're signing up for. We're in a fight of faith, right? But they don't really realize that they are surrendering to Jesus being their Lord. And if he's their Lord, then he is the one that decides how he talks to you. You don't get to decide whether it's nice, whether it's the right tone, whether it's too dogmatic, whether it's to your fitting and the way I was raised and the way I like it, all that could be trash. What if? I would have dealt with that at 17 years old. I'm a preacher's kid. My dad, I mean, he was as strong as any parent's ever been to make me obey and follow the Lord, right? But at 17 years old, I was challenged. Do I believe this because dad believes it or do I actually know it? I realize if I'm going to go with what God called me, I can't just ride on dad's coattails. Now, the beautiful thing about it, I got to work with my dad all these years, and he's still here. He remains, as Aaron pointed out, and he's traveling today, but he, he texts me. I sure miss being home. He loves being here. He loves remaining. It's like pulling teeth from my mom to even get him to take her on a trip. He loves being home. But can you take the corrections of the word? Can you take a rebuke from someone authorized by God to rebuke? If you can't, then you won't be a disciple. Now, you're not supposed to take rebukes from some people because some rebukes are inspired by Satan, while others are inspired by God. And you 
should be smart enough to know what channels are from where. We'll talk more about that in a minute, but go to Mark chapter 8. I like this. I love the Word of God. Don't you love the Word? Just say it, I love the Word. Mark 8, 31, Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. So is that pretty clear, the plan of what's going to happen? That's ahead of time, he's telling them. God's Word warns you ahead of time. And just like Mark said, the blueprint of your life has already been written before you were even born. It's up to you to discover it. You don't decide it, you discover it. Yeah. So ahead of time, he's telling his disciples. These are disciples that are supposed to take him at his word. I'm going to go, going to be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and scribes. I'm going to be killed. After three days, I will rise again. You literally would think if they believed that word, and they held to that word. They all would have been out there early that morning, on resurrection morning, looking for him to come up out of that grave. But they forgot the word, just like you and I have done. They forgot it. See, God did not leave you alone. This is my whole point. You will forget things. My wife has been going to see Dr. Sarah doing some physical therapy things. And it's good. Some, you know, I don't know what all she's doing, but she's helping her out. My wife was saying, yeah, we do this and this. Oh, i got to ask her. We were doing this, and i got to remember what it is. It's hard to remember, even though we went over it over and over. I said, yeah, see, because you got to practice it over and over. And that's the way we are as humans. you just got to get over this, okay? you got to come to church over and over and over and over. And when you don't feel like it, it's mundane. And when all hell's breaking loose, you come. When your feelings are hurt, you come. When everything's all good, you come. Why? Because you know God is speaking, and he has something for me. If you'd approach every service that way, you would leave here a sharp Christian, an on-point Christian. You wouldn't forget the word so easy. Accelerate Church places a high priority on instilling God's word into the heart of the next generation. Our kids' ministry is spreading hope by teaching the word of God on a level that young ones will understand and take home with them. In Accelerate Kids, your kid will experience awesome praise and worship, illustrated sermons from God's Word, and interactive games in both big and small groups. Serving God is fun, and we would love for your kids to join us at Accelerate. Any rebuke you've ever received, and the heart of it isn't from the heart of God. In other words, from the Word of God. Hey, hey, hey. What you're doing in your life, living with someone you're not married to, that's called fornication. you got to get married. Here's what people have said to me. You're telling me that a legal document? I'm telling you, you've got to get married according to God's Word. The marriage bed is undefiled. Anyone else you go to bed with, it's illegal. Whether it's a man and a man, a man and a woman, a woman and a woman, a man and a horse, uh, whatever it is. Y'all sitting here and want to be like, what? A pastor friend of mine, he won up me for sure. I was telling him about a situation I dealt with, you know, privately. I didn't tell him names or nothing. I just said, that's what I dealt with. He said, that ain't nothing. I said, what do you mean that ain't nothing? He said, I had a guy call me about midnight one night, said he needed to talk. He'd had sex with his horse. Yep, you one up me. That's Satan at work. Now, see, you, we, we don't talk about these kind of things normally in this kind of setting. But the truth be known is if the cover was pulled back on America right now, there's a lot of bestiality going on, even in our own area. It was just two or three years back, animal control here came out and publicly stated that there are many animals they've taken that have been abused sexually by people. It's disgusting. It's demon activity. But it's happening. We'd rather not even look at it. But that's someone that never took a rebuke any time, so they're way off the rails. Now here's what happens. Here you are in church, so you're like, Pastor, 
I wish you hadn't even brought that up. I'd rather not know. Ignorance is bliss. Here's the problem, though. We think our little bitty white lie doesn't need to be rebuked because it's just little tiny compared to bestiality. But did you know every lie is fathered by Satan? So it's from the same source? So here's the cure. Rebuke is the cure for the mind of Satan that tries to come and capture you. Now don't sit here. Listen, Jesus has all authority. I hate Satan. But we can't deny he has power and he deceives many. And we're in a time where Jesus says the number one sign of this end time hour. He literally said, many will be deceived. We sit here and act like that's not happening. The majority of humanity is deceived. I pray not you. But just because you're sitting in here doesn't mean you're not deceived. See, you could hear the word and you could actually quote it back to me. But if you don't apply that word, then you deceive yourself. You brought it on yourself. If you approach things from man's point of view, yes, I'm moving slow because this is worth you digesting. <laughs> if you view everything from man's point of view, well, that's not nice. I didn't appreciate that he brought up sodomy and didn't call him the LGBTQI movement. There's, it's sodomy. That's what the sin is. And Sodom lies in ashes, the bottom of a sea, still to this day, as a reminder of how God feels about that. So let's go back to the illustration of Mark doing concrete. We all get it. And I thought that was outstanding, by the way. As he's operating by a building. And we all get it. But see, if God does this, and he uses them as an example, and then he has Peter write about it, and then he has Jude write about it in the New Testament, and now preachers say they're preachers of the gospel, but they don't ever mention it to you, no wonder that movement keeps on marching forward. No wonder they try to stir things up against men of God. And if you're not careful, you will sit up in here and unwittingly join together with the LGBT spirit thinking it's God. Wake up! There's a rebuke for you. Well, I can't take that. You ain't no disciple then. Wake up! What are we doing? This is a war. Satan is not playing. He's playing for keeps. Approach it from man's point of view. Well, a million people can't be wrong. Can I tell you something? There's about five billion wrong. Forget your million. God's truth stands eternal. You see, there may come a time all men lie to you. Even you, you lie to yourself. But God's word is true. I don't care how desperate it gets. God's word is true. It can be depended upon. Therefore, it's up to you to get in here and see, oh, this is how God approaches this subject. Let's think about it. Let's talk about it for a second. How did he deal with Sodom? He went to a righteous man and he said, that sin is an abhorrence to me. I'm going to destroy them. And the man of God said, oh, Lord. He started dealing with the Lord. He got it down. If there's ten righteous, there weren't ten righteous people left. Now, when I look in this room, there is still hope. Because I see more than ten righteous. Though that doesn't mean that's the standard always. Here's the problem and here's the big fat difference. Sodom had no Bible. We do. And our country was founded on those principles. Hmm. It's one thing not to know. It's another thing to know the truth and depart from it. Puts you in a different category. You see, it had been better for you not to know the way of truth than to have known the way of righteousness and be the dog that returns to its vomit. Be the pig that got cleaned up from your worldly ways and you go right back to the mud because it feels so good in the mud. So let's, let's just point this out. So God, in his word, I can show you chapter and verse. It's in 2 Peter, it's in Jude. He said to the end time Christian, keep in mind my word will prevail. And Sodom lays in ashes. So one man got out of there with his daughters. His wife walked out of the city with him but turned back. 
Jesus brought her up to you and me. Didn't he? What did he say to us? Remember Lot's wife. You remember that? Why would Jesus make that statement? If he was going down the cross and everything's all good, why would he make that statement? Why? Have you ever, I mean, maybe you don't think like me, but I sit around, I, I ponder on that, and it, bu- it bugs me. Why would he say that? Why would he say that? Because it matters where you're looking. It matters what you're minding. It matters. It matters. And you approach it from man's point of view, you're going to miss it, and you're going to claim it's God and it's Satan. What a shame. What a rotten, dirty shame. So, Peter called Satan in this illustration we looked at. Later died, crucified upside down for Jesus. Did you know that? Peter, the same one. The exact same guy that's called Satan. I would dare say you have never taken rebuke from anybody, anywhere, anytime, even if I was just screaming at you and the shoe fits you. Never have you been called Satan. Straight up, you're Satan. From the king of kings. Jesus never lied. But that man later died upside down on a cross. Obviously, he didn't allow the harshest rebuke ever given to any disciple to cause him to quit. Isn't that something? The way he went out was crucified upside down. And he's the one that said, turn me upside down. I'm not worthy to die right side up like my king did. Why would a man go that hard for the Lord? Why would he give it that much effort for the Lord after being called Satan by the man that died for him? Because he recognized he must really love me or he would have never, ever, ever corrected that stupid way of thinking. You see, a God-ordained rebuke has the ability to awaken you from your stupid way of thinking. Well, once again, thank you for tuning in to today's program. If you would like to hear the rest of this series, you can head over to AccelerateChurch.cc and click on the Media tab. There you will see sermons that Pastor Jeremy has preached since 2013, and this series is also there ready for you to download. If you are in the area, we would love to meet you in person. We're located at 4400 South Crockett here in Amarillo. Our service times are Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. We'd love to meet you in person. And if we don't see you in person, we'll catch you on the next Accelerate Church TV broadcast.